On Skeptocrat this week, Keith talked about how awkward it must be for people who have birthdays on September 11th. And it only occurred to me later that we kind of have one of those ourselves. And not we as in this show or anything like that, but we as in the atheist movement, right? Many people credit the 9-11 terrorist attacks as the event that first started to shake society out of its religious coddling stupor and forced it to reckon with the true dangers of religious devotion. Now, I would argue that this atheist movement was an inevitable outgrowth of the Internet's growing ubiquity around the same time. But regardless, 9-11 marked an important step in the movement's growth, even if only from a rhetorical perspective, which means that by a lot of people's reckoning, the new atheist movement turned 22 years old this week. Of course, the term new atheism has fallen out of favor along the way, and, and good thing too, right? Nothing 22 years old or older should still be called new. I'm looking at you, York and Jersey. Over the last couple of decades, it swelled and it split and it swelled and it split. It's rejected its heroes. It's taken new heroes. It's rejected those heroes too. It's been declared dead more times than Freddie and Jason combined, but it's still here. And it's plenty old enough to have a drink at this point, which is a good thing because it sure as fuck needs a drink at this point. Right? I, it's, I feel like a lot of people sort of lost track of that lesson that seems so obvious in the wake of 9-11. And to be fair, a lot of you motherfuckers weren't even born then, and even a lot of people Eli's age didn't have a lot of knowledge of the wider political landscape at the time. And over the years, the focus of 9-11 has shifted away from the dangers of religious extremism that caused it in favor of focusing on the nationalist extremism that it caused, right? The, the, the sort of visceral reaction of, man, this is what happens when people actually believe the 72 virgin shit that the new atheist movement was born into has largely been lost, even among people who are in that movement. Now, clearly, there were a lot of geopolitical forces at play on September 11th of 2001. So to a lot of people, it seems simplistic and even bigoted to reduce the attacks down to religion did it. Right. Some would argue that blaming religion for 9-11 would be little better than blaming airplanes or box cutters. Religion was simply a tool that the terrorists used to accomplish their attack. Hell, those people would probably even say misused instead of used, as though religions came with a list of intended uses from their manufacturers. But in the words of both Cicero and Eli trying to hire an Italian sex worker, qui bono? Who benefits? Right, right, like the ostensible political goals of 9-11 were to get the U.S. to remove military personnel from Saudi Arabia. It had the exact opposite effect, and it could only have ever had the exact opposite effect, right? Those attacks had every bit as much likelihood of removing American military bases from Saudi Arabia as they had of sending those hijackers to fucking paradise. And yet people act as though the political goals are somehow more real than the religious ones simply because they're secular. Right. They, they say that the religious goals were just a cloak to trick religious zealots into carrying out political goals. But it would be far more accurate to say that the political goals were a cloak to trick political zealots into funding religious goals. Now, you might be inclined to say that the 9-11 attacks harmed the Muslim faith by turning people against it in places like the U.S. and Europe. But as American Christianity's illusion of persecution is happy to attest, few things are better at turning religious people inward than rejection from the outside. Right. Religious people certainly benefit from religious tolerance, but it makes religious institutions wither. I don't say that to blame religious minorities for their own persecution. Right. That's not fair. But I say it to emphasize the fact that the goals of religious leaders and those of their followers pretty much never line up. And of course, our secular nation is still under attack by religious zealots. They're using the courts more than violence these days. But to be clear, they're still using plenty of fucking violence. Right, Both before and after 9-11, Americans faced far more physical danger from Christian terrorists than those of any other flavor or all other flavors combined. But the dangers of their murderous rampages pale in comparison to the shit that they're doing to our laws. And once again, the religious goals are hiding behind political goals, hiding behind religious goals. Religious groups are literally training armies to take over the government and install theocratic leadership. And our society, by and large, carries on as though the religions are just, you know, poor, ignorant rubes being tricked into working against their own best interests by cynical politicians and their political goals. They assume that religion is the hammer rather than the hand. But there's at least some good news to wrap around all of this shit as we contemplate the last couple of decades of activism, because as big as the losses we've taken both legislatively and judicially are, the strides we've taken culturally might be even bigger. 
right? Like the word atheism might not pull as well as it used to, but the benefits and need for secularism and for secular activism have never been more clear to more people. The number of people rejecting church and rejecting faith has never been higher in this country or in this world. Hell, the number of people calling themselves atheists has never been higher. Because whenever we're in danger of losing sight of why we were here in the first place, religion is happy to remind us of all the terrible shit that happens when faith crashes into your institutions with a full tank of gas and a full head of steam.